just have to eat or something. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> Who eats? Okay, our outline is on really big paper. <laughs> just oh, so you know. But it's it will still It'll fit. Okay, it will just fit. Like just uh, letting you know. <laughs> and this I'm supposed to crumple this up when it's like new, right? Oh, don't crumple it up. Okay. Thought it was one that you like. Well, you can crumple. Well, okay, so you, it doesn't get the lines. Okay, you don't want to crumple, but what you What's can the, do if it's too if it's like brand new is like hand me a paper towel. So it's not so tender. It's like oh, get the like kind of rub, rub it around. a little bit. Okay. Yeah. But if you crumple it a, a lot, then it actually will make like Good crumpling lines. marks oh. on your here, you can do that if you want. Yes, or if you don't want no. to, that's fine too. <laughs> I was like, I'm not gonna, you can stop. I don't wanna make you do it. Okay, we're live? Yep. Okay, oh, hey. hello. <laughs> Let me get to. Uh, just get situated here. I just downed like three cinnamon rolls. Ooh. They're, well, they weren't full size ones, <laughs> but. <laughs> glad, you, glad you cleared that up. I was just like, A1, I'm like, that tastes good. I'm like, I'm just gonna keep on eating this. I hate that. Like. Pregnancy hunger where you're so hungry, like you physically can't control yourself. You just cannot stop eating whatever it is. You know what I mean? Like, I just always have a taste of metal in my mouth. Ooh. And so I just keep on eating to get the taste out of my mouth. That's concerning. It's a, it's, it's a thing. Are we frozen? Mine is frozen. I can't even find it on YouTube, so I can't answer that question. Look at, look at how it's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> That's super funny. Well, since we have a couple minutes, I'm going to go potty real quick. Okay. Okay, if you're here, I'm sorry that we're not talking to you. We're trying to find it. Yeah, I see it. We good? I think so. You just said your cinnamon all <laughs> Okay, this lady says it's not frozen for her. So oh, okay, okay. Sue says mine is okay. Cool. Do you need me to keep track of any comments? Uh, if I can get it up, I should be able to. Okay. To watch it. <laughs> uh, oh, maybe I should turn my Wi-Fi on. Maybe that would help. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're good. We're good. Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Pat says yay. Lisa's watching. Laura. Laura Jones. So happy for this live. I've missed you all. We have missed you too. Helen. Hey, Helen. Judy Smith. Oh, it's so great to see some names on here. Oh, Whitney says the metal taste is acid reflux. Ooh. Gross. What can I do? What can I do about that? Drink some pickle juice? Canadian. Hi, Danison. Is that a thing? Hi, Danison. Would that really help? I don't think it would. I just made that up. That lemon ginger ale is funky tasting a little bit, I think. Lemon ginger ale? Yeah. I don't think it's lemon mm. ginger ale. It's ginger ale with the twist of lemon. I think it's been in there for almost a year. Go look at the can. I'm telling you, it has lemon in it. Heidi. It's right in front of your face. Hello, Heidi. Katie. Kathy from Tennessee. There's one right there. Kate says, was this planned? And I totally just missed it. We did plan this. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had it on my calendar. So. But I don't think we sent out an email. I think we just made a Facebook yeah. invite. And then talked a little bit about it on Instagram. We probably could have talked about it more. Yeah. But it's fine. Some of you got the memo. It's fine. I found it. Did it Did it say lemon on there? On the ginger ale? Yeah. It doesn't say it's right in front of your face. It's probably Michael's. Yeah. Might try it. Okay. Oh, YouTube. Hello. Wow, alive. Yay. Oh, hi, Tina. Warm-ups. Tamara says, ew. What are you saying, ew, to? <laughs> Pro probably the ginger ale. I would assume that. <laughs> I need to like get, I need to get pumped up. We're going to paint. 
We're gonna have a good time. I'm gonna roll up my sleeves because I'm wearing a baggy white sweater and about to paint a very colorful thing. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I make good choices regularly. It seems like your MO. <laughs> There's, like There's seven, that one cheap stuff, you guys. It's like 17 oh. aprons. I can't cover it there are quite a few aprons here. Oh, I'm gonna risk it. Yum, cinnamon okay. rolls. Hi, from Chicago. Wendy, welcome. Okay, here's the reference photo. Kenan, can they see my palette? Okay, uh, they can't see me right now. <laughs> I have the power. Uh, actually, I might adjust the top camera. I apologize for any strange views you guys might get. Well, I'm standing here, just ghost. Oh, paintbrushes. Oh. <laughs> Do you need paintbrushes still? Yes. We should have some right there. Uh, yes, they can see your palette. Okay. So one. We might have to find round two. Okay. Um. Hmm. Keenan, on my desk, can you see if there's a round two? There should be. I can use the round one. Okay. Yeah. Emily, hand me a paper towel. Yes, absolutely. Wow, it's been a while since I've done one of these that I'm like losing focus on what I need to do. What time is it? We still have time, right? Yeah, we're good. 7.13. Okay, we got two minutes. Two minutes, you guys. Thank you. Then we're going to party. Party. Paint party time. Yeah. Can they see the reference photo in that? When I throw it up there, they will be able to see it. Yes. Please don't throw up. Oh, throw it up. Throw it up. <laughs> I'm like, who's going to throw up? Not me. I might. <laughs> Do we need an outline? Yes. Teresa asked if we need an outline. There is an outline with this project, Hummingbird. You should, they should be able to get the Hummingbird outline yeah. on our website. On the website, yeah. yeah. It's there. This tutorial releases tomorrow. That's why I was confused for a second. I think it should be there. It should be there. That's why I'm confused. <laughs> What's going on? The what day is it? The hummingbird <laughs> doesn't come out till tomorrow. <laughs> it should be on there. I'm easily confused. I forgot filming this tutorial, so. And it, w it literally only happened a few days ago, so that is. Nancy says she wishes she was here so she could bring me another Heath bar. I also wish that. Are Heath Bars your favorite? They're delicious. She okay. brought me one uh, a while back. She was on a live. I can't remember which live she was on, but, I mean, it was yeah, a, it's there. several months ago. I, it goes back and forth between favorites, I feel like. I used to think Heath Bars were called health bars when I was younger. Oh. And I was just like, why would they call a candy bar a health <laughs> bar? And I'm like, people trying to trick us <laughs> to eating their candy bars. The Illuminati. <laughs> No, I just needed to learn how to read better. <laughs> it's fine. Grandma's favorite. I think there's some of my mom's favorite. I think I'd like to center this correctly. Hello, Cindy from Louisiana. Crab's not going to be perfect. Welcome, welcome. Karen wants to know if I'm getting paid yet. Undetermined. Never, we will never Please tell Please don't you. bring it up again. <laughs> <laughs> and his wife is here, so let's keep this yeah. on the... <laughs> I'm the breadwinner. They've been living in the back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, perfect. Somebody posted that one. Let me pour out the colors and then we'll get uh, started. I have that tape. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Yes. Oh, Wait. look, somebody posted. Did you post that outline? I did not. I don't know who's on. Where was it posted so we can on, tell you? In the YouTube. comments. In Facebook? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so the outline is on the com in the comments on yes. Facebook. Yes. Yes, it is. So I'm going to show a top person. shot real quick so they can see your outline just because someone requested it. Yeah. I accidentally printed this on huge paper. <laughs> That's why our... <laughs> oh, you're trying to put the flowers on the top edge? Yeah. Okay. So I did it I'll, top I'll it corner. That I'll paper it is enormous. It, it, is. it is. It was in our printer, and I just was like, you know what? I'm still going to use it. YOLO. <laughs> Works just fine. I can't read this place, but I want to try. Hi from Okonomowoc. That sounds about right. First live for me. Oh, welcome. Welcome, Angela. Welcome, welcome. Hello from Alaska. Nancy says, go Chiefs. Yay. When you say welcome like that, it makes me think of she's the man. 
Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, are we ready? We are ready, Freddy. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Start over. Start over. <laughs> now, now we're now ready. We're, now we're ready. <laughs> and we're back with Sarah Cray. <laughs> Okay, welcome everybody to Let's Wake Art. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for our special live that we're doing of the hummingbird. Ooh. Yay. Thank you. Sorry. We ooh and ah during okay. these lives. I forgot. <laughs> so I was almost like, oh. <laughs> and you guys who used to watch the lives with us, thank you so much for coming back. You might have to remind us the order of some things that we used to do because, gosh, my mind is blinking on some of them. But we'll be okay. We'll figure it out. We'll be fine. And if it's your first time tuning in, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Now for our live paint alongs, we do it a little bit differently. Um, I have Suzanne here, who is Keenan's wife. She is going to be asking questions along the way. You guys are free to ask questions in the comments. I will try my very best to answer them as we're painting. Of course, we have Keenan doing yeah. the camera work. And Print the cameras. Entertainment. Sure, sure. Yes. We really, I know you come for him and that's yes, okay. Thank I've you. accepted <laughs> this. We've accepted it. <laughs> we know it to be true and it's okay. <laughs> um, we are using four colors tonight for this. So let me get those tested. What? Nothing. Okay. Tested. tested. Okay. So our very first color is uh, lemon yellow. And uh, do I do this for the lives? Not yeah. really, but this is okay. going to be great because the, yeah, it's, it's perfect. It's great. It's, it's great. We're doing a uh, magenta. We are doing sea blue. One of my favorite colors. And leaf green. Do you have Dr. P.H. Martin equivalents off the top of your head? Dr. P.H. Martin equivalents off the top of my head will be lemon yellow, cherry red, Juniper green, olive green. Here's a shot out of a cannon. What if they were named the same thing? All of them? Just the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm impressed. <laughs> like, Thank you. Off the top of your head. Um, okay, two things before we get into painting. Uh, one, you need an outline for this project. So if you don't have your subscription box or a kit, you can download and print that outline for free on our website. Just find the Hummingbird Project. The, there will be a button there that says download outline. Um, two, we're celebrating our two year anniversary. We did our first paint along live two years ago. That's crazy. Holy cow. Yeah, January 16th, I believe actually was wow. our very first live. We did all the purple flowers. So it's our two year anniversary. That's impressive. Okay. And also we launched our loyalty program today. Woo -woo. Monet so, in the bank. Monet in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just kind of a fun celebration. That's why we decided to do a live. Um, and there's posts we have, I believe we had an email going out about the uh, loyalty program and now it shows up. Your subscriptions do count towards the loyalty points. All of that fun stuff. If you have questions, you can ask, and I will do my best to answer them. But just want to give you guys a little something back for, for being a part of our family. Is that weird that I just call this a family? No. A family. It it's feels fine. right, doesn't it? It does feel right. Okay. So we are going to do our outline, and then our oath, and then our warm-ups, and then we'll start painting. Perfect. Okay, great. All right. So for the outline, I tape mine down with a piece of painter's tape onto the watercolor paper. And then you're going to take your graphite paper and do it dark side down. See how long my paper is on this? It's fine. It's fine, just fine. <laughs> it's just really convenient. <laughs> it's just really long, it's okay. You got the outline and the steps. Uh. Shayla says, when it comes to the loyalty program, does that mean anyone with a subscription box will get credit for that purchase each month? Oh, she asked it before. She said, maybe I should listen before. Oh, I <laughs> yes. Thanks for reading my Yes, mind. you will. Correct. You will. Next question. <laughs> that one was easy. <laughs> Dead. Okay, now when you're doing your graphite, 
Oh, just so you guys know, graphite paper is totally reusable and it actually gets better with age. So, um, because when you first start using it, the lines tend to be really dark because that graphite is fresh on the paper. And the more you reuse it, then that graphite tends to wear off and so the lines tend to be a little bit softer. I don't know what this pencil is here, but I'm using it. You, it's just a regular one? but I dipped it in paint. That's why oh. there's paint on it. It's fine. <laughs> That's why it's extra pretty. <laughs> and then, um, so you put graphite paper dark side down, and then you just outline. I like to use a felt tip marker when I'm outlining um, because it's a naturally soft tip, which means I will get a softer line than if I used the, uh, oh, yeah, that didn't even show up. Can I have that micron pen, actually? Yeah. Less soft. Le maybe a little bit firmer. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, mine's barely there. And we're just oh, going to... That's weird. I'm always the like heavy-handed one who does like the dark, dark line. So just adjust your pressure. I always like to do a mark first and then I test it. I'm going to do this darker so you guys can see better on the overhead of what I'm doing. But try and make yours as light as possible because watercolor is transparent. So you will see it through the watercolor. Oh yeah, somebody asked the best eraser for erasing graphite lines. So graphite lines you can't completely erase, but you can lighten them. And I like the rubber kneaded eraser for erasing anything in general. Um, Kay asks if this is in this month's kit, as in I would assume February. Um, this is not a February project. This is a January project. This is the fourth project in our January subscription box, which hopefully you guys got at the beginning of January. And um, this tutorial, the pre-recorded release is tomorrow. So if you can't paint along during this live right now, um, first of all, this video is still going to be available. And second of all, you'll have the pre-recorded tutorial to watch tomorrow. Okay. Uh, Valerie asks, when will the February outline contest winner be revealed? Will we get to see the other entries? I don't, uh, I don't know when, if we're, you're going to be able to see the other entries, Valerie, but the winner will be revealed in February, and also their name is on the outline, so when you receive your subscription box, um, you'll see who won. I'm just chatting away here. I'm barely, barely getting my bird done. Well, there a lot are. Of comments, a lot of happy people. Oh, Heidi said she really missed the lives. I missed it too. It's good to, to talk to you all again. How's that ballpoint working out for you? Is it really dark? It's probably pretty dark, but I figured with, I could I was trying to get as sharp a lines as I could with the mm. with the beak and stuff, and then I was gonna switch back to the pencil. Just because it's it's such a like broad line, like with, yeah. this, with this graphite pencil. It's Oh, yeah, it is. Which is fine, but I wanted the beak to be nice and sharp. Can they hear Suzanne okay? They can hear her enough. I think she's not overly loud. Tell us if... Uh, I've never heard that before. Tell us if Suzanne is too quiet for you guys and you can't hear her because um, I want to make sure you guys can hear what's being said. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Three questions. What is the outline winner? Okay, in the month of November, in our Facebook group, we had a little outline contest going where you guys submitted outlines, and the winner, I made a project out of the outline submitted. So that is what that means. Second question, when is your due date? My due date is February 26th, which is in a month. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's fine. Um, but... My babies historically come early, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll just see. You Oops. just apologized and then said it was okay to yourself. <laughs> Did I really? Sorry, I, I apologized. It's fine. <laughs> that was funny. The volume is good two out of three people. Okay. Probably the mic to people. Okay, Shayla said, I saw a picture of cowboy boots with flowers on your Instagram one time. Is that going to be part of a box or a bonus kit or is that a personal painting? That is going to be part of a subscription box for one of the months. I'm just not going to tell you which one. 
But yes, that will be a project. Karen said go for my birthday on the 19th. Okay, Ooh. Sarah? Okay. okay. Karen also said, thank you, Tree Hugging Buddhist, for Steve. Oh, yes. <laughs> Steve is our, Steve is our th thesaurus friend. Yes. Oh, I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. We reference about. Steve when me and Keena don't know the definitions of things, which actually happens a lot more yeah. than it probably I should. I look at it every tutorial. <laughs> In our house, you hear a lot of, I don't know, Google it. It's like literally our thing. I don't know. Just, just Google it. Ask Alexa. Yeah, she knows. I probably just set it off. Sorry. Okay. Rachel asked if this is my third baby. It is my third, and it's our first boy. So I have two girls that are eight and four, and then this little baby boy's joining us in the next month. And I just realized it last night. That you're pregnant? Yeah. Like, I knew, like, Michael had the same thing. I was like, Michael, our lives are going to change forever. We're adding someone to our family. He's like... You're nine months pregnant. How are you just... And I'm like, it's just it's hitting me. It's, <laughs> it's so busy, I can't... I'm like, he will be a part of our lives forever. Good old Cray Boy. Yeah. It's good, though. We're excited. Question mark. Cray Boy. Cray Boy. What? Oh, because you don't have Question mark name. Cray. Question mark. Oh, yeah. We're still not sure. Q. You should name him Q. Oh, Rita says, I saw a metallic sunset project on, on Instagram. Oh, you did, Rita. You sure did. You go, girl. And that is a little hint, hint for you guys of what's coming up. Okay. Sandy, when are you going to start painting? Never. I'm just going to talk here about my little baby boy. <laughs> you came to the wrong you live. Came, maybe. <laughs> Listen, it's been a while since I've done a live. I'm getting a little chatty. That's all right. All right. I'm still working on my own. Life's too short to not we're be good. chatty. All right, okay. I think I'm done. Okay. So, we're going to do a couple warm ups here um, oh. before we. Oh, we got to do our. Uh, oath. Oath. Are you ready to do your oath? Yes. Okay, right so around. raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise, and I promise to, to have, have fun. fun. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now for our warm-ups. So the first thing that we're going to go over is our values. Um, value is something I talk about probably every project because it's really important when you're trying to create form. Value is all about the lightness and darkness of a color. Um, with normal painting like acrylic or oil, if you want a lighter value, you usually tend to add white paint. With watercolor, we don't really need to do that. We just have to add more water, and the white of the paper shows through more, which then in turn makes it a lighter value. One of the reasons why I love watercolor, because it's like water does the work for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, we. Do you have an eat eraser? I have a couple little spots, but... Probably not right here. They're not in bad spots. I can get them later. I know that we sell needed erasers. <laughs> <laughs> and I know we're an art one? store. We don't, don't have one. one. <laughs> it's, right. it's, in, it's, in a, it's not in the part where I'm going to paint, so I can always erase it later. Okay, awesome. Sorry. It's fine. Just making us look bad, Suzanne. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so for a light value, usually I do dark values first, but I'm going to show you guys how to do light values first because it's... Um, good to know how to do it both ways. You're going to get your paintbrush wet. You're going to hit the bristles off the side of the cup so your brush is just damp. And then you're going to grab just a tiny bit of paint. And this is why I like the butcher tray palette is because I can pull paint out. And then I'm like, okay, I just need a little bit of paint here. And there is my light value. I don't know this person's actual name, but number uh -huh. one horse productions oh. says, I'm doing the oath in my bed while doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't compare okay. yourself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now to get a little bit darker value, you're just going to grab a little bit more paint. Like so. And for a really dark value, you're going to just plunge your paintbrush right into that paint straight away. 
just like bathe it and then paint <laughs> so there are your three values you know what's coming to <laughs> okay now we're going to do the same thing except opposite and quickly to get a, a value change that is a, like a transitional value change so I get my paintbrush damp I hit it off the side of the cup I bathe my paintbrush in the paint to get a dark value I make a mark I immediately dip my paintbrush a couple of times and go right off from where I left off and just keep on repeating that over and over again so you can transition from a dark value to a light value. And this is a technique I, I personally like to put in my dark values first and then I just use water and the color that's already down to blend them out. Okay, now um, the last thing that we are going to go over is um, we're going to go over some textures because we have a few feather textures that we're going to deal with. So um, you grab your smaller brush. Now when I do feather textures, um, what you want to try and think of is feathers um, have lots of tiny little lines, but when tiny little things are gathered together, they make chunks. It's the same for hair. It's the same for fur. It's the same for leaves on trees. So really what you're looking for is where those chunks gather and then create shadows onto the form of whatever you're making. So um, what I like to do when I do my little feather textures like on the belly is um, I like to do like I make noises to help me. I remember. So if this, if it's helpful for you, like yeah, you do like a ch -ch 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 -ch, <laughs> like that. So I like to do a few dashes that are kind of a V shaped. See how they kind of are following a V pattern. Ch -ch 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 -ch. And you, it doesn't have to be like four. Or five. It could just be three. Sometimes it's four. But you can see that they have different lengths and different heights. So I'm kind of just doing the edges of some of these feathers that you would see. Can they see that? Are you on the close-up cam? I'm changing it right now. Okay. Just want to make sure. And then uh, whenever you're doing textures on something, you're going to follow the shape of the form. So like on our belly, you'll notice that they're all kind of rounded and following that round belly. So when you go to do these textures on the hummingbird on the belly, you're going to kind of make them a little bit round. You would not do them this way on the bird because the feathers aren't growing that way. The feathers um, conform to the shape of the body. Anne says it's her first live. She's super excited. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, Anne. Okay. That's like weirdly my favorite technique. The like, the t it's like a challenge to get the lines as small as possible. Yeah, it's kind of fun. It's fun. Just little, little, uh, little details at the end. And then um, we do that on top of a wash that's already dry. So if we want to do that already on one of our value changes, if it's already dry, this is called the wet on dry technique, which we will also be using. And that's just, you put a wash down, you let it dry, and then you paint on top of it with a wet brush, paint, <laughs> thing. Okay. I think we are ready to start painting. So, you are welcome to keep your warm-up sheet handy for testing colors. Um, we are going to do this hummingbird in six steps. And I hope that these match the same ones that are going to be in the tutorial tomorrow, but I'm pretty sure. It'll be fine. Okay, so very first step, we're going to do the belly and the throat. The second step, we are going to paint the back of the bird. Third step, we're going to do the eyes and the beak. Fourth step, we're going to start our wings. Fifth step, we're going to move on to our flowers and our leaves. And then the sixth step, we're going to come back and finish up our hummingbird with some textures, little finishing details, any areas that we need to uh, do some extra work on. 
Okay. So, I'm going to put this here so you guys can have a reference to look at if you don't have one. So, let's start with the, the belly of the bird. So the belly of the hummingbird is white, but whenever something is white and has form, there's still shadow on it or value. So we're just gonna put a soft little shadow on the belly to show that it's round and shapely and it's not totally flat. Um, I'm going to grab a little bit of blue and I'm gonna try and mix a neutral grayish color. So um, to mix, to desaturate a colors, you're gonna use its complement. The complement of a color is what's directly across from it on the color wheel. The opposite of blue on a color wheel is orange, which we don't have, but we have yellow and magenta, so we can mix orange. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow, I'm gonna grab a little bit of magenta, and I'm gonna mix that with a little bit of blue. So it desaturated the blue, and now it kinda has a greenish hint. If it has too much green, pick up a little bit more magenta and mix that in there and that will neutralize the green. This is where I added the extra magenta. And then I'm gonna do a little extra blue in there because I can. Because I like my color, I don't know, I like, I like to have a little bit of extra color in there. Okay, so then I'm gonna make sure that this is a really light value. So again, I'm just taking a little bit of paint, just like we did in our warm ups, just a little bit of paint and I'm going to do the belly. So I'm gonna start by putting the shadow here on the bottom and then use just water to blend it out. And I'm gonna do another layer because that first layer was looking a little green to me. So I mixed a little bit of my magenta with my blue right here to kind of make a grayish purple. I'm using that. Again, this is gonna be a really light wash. Hopefully, um, compared to the other colors we put down, whatever color you decide to make this belly, it shouldn't stand out that much compared to the vibrancy of the other parts that we will paint. So it's just a really light wash. Okay. Now when we get to the throat, and that's it. That's it for the belly. Good job. You did it. Well done. Well done. Okay. So I'm going to mix a little bit more of a purple color because I want to use my magenta. And then I also want like a deep purple um, for the darker parts of the throat. So I'm going to grab a little bit of my sea blue and my magenta and mix that together to get this gorgeous color. That's so pretty. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start with this kind of dark purpley color. You don't want it, you still want it more pink than purple. Okay, so make sure it's still within the pink realm. And I'm going to right on the throat, put in this like really dark pinky purple. And then I'm gonna rinse my brush and blend out to the line on my outline. Okay. Now, these are actual, um, I think this is a ruby-throated hummingbird, and that's mm -hmm. why it's so bright, but um, these are feathers underneath here. So the line is not gonna be perfectly straight because the feathers kind of have a rounded edge to them. So don't do like a straight line across the bottom. And then what I like to do to add a little bit of that um, vibrancy, that color vibrancy, is after I blend out that purple color, and you might have a little bit too much water on yeah. your thing, Suzanne. So whenever you're laying colors down and there's kind of starts, the, the water starts to pool and it kind of has a thick layer of water, if that happens to you, don't stress, just take your paper towel, blot the extra water, um, because if there's too much water, it will kind of get messy and you won't be able to keep your values. There you go. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some magenta and using just magenta, I'm gonna do the edges in here, like on more of the left-hand side. So see how that pop of color kinda, mm. can they see that good? They can see the side now. 
Okay. I still feel like I have too much water. What the heck? I <laughs> cut it off. And okay. Then... Yeah. Yeah. So so dry it. Yeah, and you can blot the whole thing in one little yeah, I guess I can. one little swoop. Yep. Okay. Ta-da. So. Okay. When you're getting your colors, you just want to make sure that your brush is barely damp. Okay. You don't want it to have a lot of water on it. And it could just be from where you're pulling to of how much water you have. Okay. So you're just going to grab a little bit like so. I don't know if they, got, if they can see that very well, but that's okay. They probably... Listen, this is just for Suzanne, okay? <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> that's why we're here. And then drop in some pink. Okay. All right. So... Yes, Carla, I'll pull Suzanne's uh, painting over as we keep on going. I should have done that right before I just did those tips for her, and I'm sorry. Okay, so we got her throat, we got her belly. That's step one. Congratulations. Good job. We're going to move on to step two, which is the really fun part. We're going to put in the back coloring of the bird, which is the very colorful green and yellow and blue part. So... There's a couple ways that you can do it. You can just pick up paint and start dropping it in. Um, I always like to do the wet on wet technique. So what that means is I'm just going to get my paintbrush damp and I'm going to do a thin layer of water. And then I'm gonna pick up some color. This is my favorite part. And just drop it in. And it's just gonna spread. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> so good. Now. This is also a time to drop in other colors. So I dropped in a little bit of green, and now I'm going to drop in some yellow. And I'm okay that they're separating. I'm not, I'm not working my brush back and forth because I want there to be little pops of colors here and there. I don't want it to just blend into a mixture of yellow and green. And then I also have some sea blue that I want to introduce too. So I'm going to take some of my sea blue and also drop that in. Now, if you drop it in and it's starting to look really polka dotty, and you're like, that's not moving, that's not doing anything, and the polka dots are like bothering you, just you can blend them out. There's nothing wrong with that. It just, and this is where it's kind of accidental because everybody has a different amount of water, of paint on their brush, so everybody's is gonna look different. So it's okay if you have to do something to yours that I'm not doing to mine, because only you can see your painting. Okay, and then we're also going to do the back of the head and I'm gonna do it the same way. So I'm gonna get my brush a little bit damp. Just do a light wash, avoiding the eyes. The eye, because there's just one. <laughs> and drop in some yellow. And some green. Oh shoot, I got my pink in there. Oh. That's okay. If, so Suzanne touched her throat with that, and so the pink started to bleed. Two things you can do. One, well, one thing you have to do is keep calm. Okay, it's yes. not a big deal. You can pick up your paper towel and just blot and pick up that extra pink, or sometimes I just let it see what it does. Because yeah. I'm like... This isn't bad. I'm like, hey, maybe that actually is going to be a really cool texture or bloom or something. Let's just see kind of what this does. Preferably a bloom. Yeah. Big fan. Depends on how edgy I'm feeling at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and let's drop some blue in there. Someone really failed us on uh, our snacks today. We have a whole wall of snacks over there, Keenan. They're so far away. We have to stand up. <laughs> I know, life is really hard. <laughs> I've got a friend that's pregnant, so I'm really just, I'm really tired. <laughs> okay. 
And that's it for our back. I'm just going to leave it. Yeah, you can leave it. And always remember that you can do layers. Is it okay if I bring yours yeah, over here and show? So this is Suzanne's, and we have some great textures and colors going on here. She's good with leaving this. And the nice thing about watercolor is you can always do more layers. So if you've done a few and you're just like, you know what, I just kind of want to see how this dries before I make any more decisions, nothing wrong with that at all. Looks good. And I kind of actually like how that green is going into that <laughs> pink and purple. I think that's cool. I thought it was going to go the other way. I thought all the pink was going to go into the yes. green instead. Okay, so now we are going to do our beak and our eyes. So I'm going to switch to my smaller paintbrush because we're doing tiny little areas. And I'm going to mix, I'm going to try and mix like a really dark black. We don't have black, um, but that's okay. It's really easy to mix black. You basically just mix all the colors that you have together on a palette. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to grab blue. And let's grab some magenta. And let's grab some green. And some yellow. And then like from here, I'll just mix according to what I have. So this has come to a dark green. And I would rather it be more of a dark blue or a dark purple than a dark green. So I want to tone down my green. So I'm going to grab magenta and mix that in there. Oh, there we go. Now we're starting to get a really dark muddy color. And I'm going to do one more swoop of blue. And now we have a really dark color that we can pull from. Okay. So I'm going to grab my tiny brush, two or one or zero. Some of you might have liners that could work too. And I'm going to start with the beak. Now, if your area is still wet, Suzanne, yours is still pretty wet. Yeah. So I would wait till yours dries before you does do this area. Okay. Because if you touch your black mm -hmm. with this wet green, it's going to just all over. And um, we like blooms, but let's keep the beak to the beak. You know what I mean? So I'm going to do a, a, the dark on the tip of the beak on the top and then the bottom part of the beak. I'm not going to do the full top of the beak because I want it to be a lighter value. So I'm just going to do that and let that dry for a second. All right, I'm just going to be super careful. And if your area is still wet, you can still paint the beak. Just leave a really thin space between the part that's wet and then when you're painting your beak. So if you can separate them still, what? Did I say something wrong? No, you're good. Okay. Um, if you can keep them separated, you can still paint the area. Just be careful. Why do hummingbirds hum? Why do hummingbirds hum? Why? Because they don't know the words. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever take your spirit animal test? Yes. What was it? I don't remember. It was a butterfly. It was a butterfly. Because mine was a butterfly, too. Oh, really? Butterfly. <laughs> Well, the first time I took it, I was a bear, which made me feel like so cool. Fierce. I was just like, yeah, I'm a bear. <laughs> Come at me, bro. And then I took it again like a year later and it was a hummingbird. And so I'm like, well, that's all right too. It's not as fierce. <laughs> you but sound like a sword. For yeah. A weapon. I can absolutely attack you with my sword like <laughs> <my> beak. <laughs> I'll go straight for the eyeballs. <laughs> okay. So. Now we're going to do the actual eyeball part. Take a deep breath because we're going to do a tiny area and I tend not to breathe when I'm painting in really tiny areas. So I like to take a deep breath. Are you going to go closer in on I'm the eyes? I'm going to get as close as I can. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to give you a, a little wide on the end. It's okay. That's okay. And if you have to, if you need to um, like lengthen your beak, Ooh, that's a good idea. you can absolutely lengthen it. I'm like, eh, that's, I, I'm like decently good at this technique. I'm sad that I didn't. Tell me when you're ready for me to do the eye. Ooh, Diane says you can have more than one spirit animal. Ooh, I like that, Di Diane. I yeah. am both a yeah. bear and a hummingbird. Yeah, then combine those things. That bear is <laughs> flapping his wings. He's not going anywhere. Like the caterpillar on a bug's leg. <laughs> yes. I like to say it's something's my Patronus. Uh, so that's Harry Potter. Let's 
I can't remember what my Patronus is. I, I don't think I've ever taken the test. I for sure have taken the test. I, I just can't remember. Is. I didn't even know. How, I love, I've loved Harry Potter since like the beginning, and I didn't even take a test to know what house I was in until like last month. I am ashamed to call you a friend. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 what house are you? Ravenclaw. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Oh, Tiffany's, hers is a sloth. That's awesome. I'm so jealous. I love <laughs> sloths so much. They are the best animal. Oh my Kansas gosh. Kansas City has them now at the zoo. Do they? Yeah, they got one. Oh. That's so great. Okay, Mal asked, did I paint the whole beak or just the top or the bottom? Mal, I did the bottom of the beak and the very tip, like the closest to the head of the top, not the full top. I hope that made sense. Okay. Mm. Now we're going to do the eyeball. So just be really careful because it's a small little space. So what I like to do when I do out eyeballs is I outline them first and then I start to fill them in and I'm gonna leave two little glare spots on the eye. One near the top and one near the bottom. Now with glare spots, you gotta be careful because if you leave those white spaces too big, then it actually makes the bird look like it has an expression on it, like the, the whites of the eye instead of glare spots. Does that make sense? Yep. So um, if your glare spots are starting to look too big that they're giving the hummingbird an expression that you don't want, usually of surprise, um, just just uh, color in the, the glare spots a little bit more. Andrea is also a Ravenclaw. Mm. Diane says her spirit animals are a bear and a dragonfly. Hey, that's pretty similar to mine. Pretty cool. We probably would get along. Hummingbirds are the only bird that can fly backwards. That's true. Interesting. I, I did know that. They can also they fly can up this. to like 40 miles per hour. Really? Yeah. Are you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, while we still have this black on our brush, we can also do our um, feet. Dannison is a Hufflepuff, and so am I. Mm -hmm. We're in the same house. I was wrong. <laughs> oh, really? 49 miles oh. per hour. So, oh. you decide. Were you wrong? Was I? I'm just used to him like making things up that I'm always like, is that right? Are you feeling? I 100% just make things up, but you guys know that by now. <laughs> okay. You'll slowly convince us, though, that something is real. I think this is the close we can get to the eye, Deborah. So that was, I can go back to it, but I mean. That close up side angle is close the closest as as can we get. can get. We're, we're sorry, it's very Without small. the secret camera. <laughs> okay, and then I'm just gonna do the feet. And I'm just following the outline for the little, the little feet hanging. Not a lot of detail. It's basically just enough there to be like, oh yeah, they have little feet. Somebody got hedgehog. <laughs> Carla, I didn't know you could get a hedgehog. <laughs> That's, That's so great. Uh, awesome. I wonder if she stays mainly on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that fact. That was the first tutorial you fil filmed with us. First fact I shared. Okay, so Alicia says her eye looks all black. Can I use a little white from the Flower and Cactus Project to drop some white in? Absolutely you can, Alicia. That's what I would do. So for me, um, so whenever if, if I'm painting and I lose some of my glare spots or my white spots, I have bleed proof white handy that I I was gonna say handy that I keep on hand. <laughs> that I have, that I'll just put that glare spot back in. White gouache would also work. White acrylic paint would also work. Um, so use what you have. Even a white gel pen, actually. I've used Ooh, white gel yeah. pens to do white um, highlights on painting. So if you wanna put it back in, you absolutely can. Okay, so while what we're going to do, um, before, I think my, let me see what my next step was. Sorry, hold on. Uh, we are going to do the wings. So, what I'm going to do for the wings here is I'm going to do these dark lines first, and then we're gonna use water to blend them out. So I already have a dark black, but I want it to be more of a navy color. You can make your wings whatever color you want if you don't want them. I was just trying to separate them from the body, so I did kind of a, 
gray navy and I think that's actually what is accurate but the fun thing about being an artist is you guys get to make the world that you're creating so if you want to do different colored wings you can so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a little bit from the black and bring it to the side and then grab some sea blue and mix that in there to get kind of a navy color and if I want to like make it a little purple I can add some magenta in there there we go All right, and then I'm just gonna follow my outline that I have here. So kind of wherever these angles go in, the feathers, I'm just kind of following the outline like so. Oh, Judy's spirit animal is a wolf. That's cool. The lone wolf? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, because woof. 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 Just kidding. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And actually, I'm going to do the same things for these under the tail tail feathers. Go for it. Okay. So I'm going to use the same blue, and I'm just going to kind of follow the outline here, too, like so. What does a cat call a hummingbird? What? Fast food. <laughs> <laughs> Pat says her, their spirit animal is a lion. Whoa. Dang, that's a fierce. That's the fiercest. Yeah, that's so great. Where do I find the find the site to find your spirit animal. Oh, Karen, I think you can just do Google like spirit animal test. Yep, I did. There's a bunch of I Googled ones. spirit animal quiz. I just took Ooh. it from a bear this time. Really? We'll see, I don't know. Maybe I'll take another test. Some spirit animal tests will then tell you what animals you should stay away from and which ones you should be friends with. Interesting. I actually don't think, I, I think mine told me to stay away from wolves. So who was a wolf? Sorry, Awkward. we can't be friends. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Oh, shoot. I forgot the bottom. That's okay. Ooh, Tiffany got a deer. Oh. Hmm. That reminds me of grace. Graceful. Deer are graceful? I feel like they are. Um, not when they're running the across, Don't the, they like when they're running across yeah. the road. They're terrified. <laughs> well, that's like last minute. They yeah. like flail deer, out in front of you. There's a term called deer in the headlights. <laughs> <laughs> but you see how they move. Though. All right, that's true. When they, they hop, move. when they glide over the fence, it's amazing. Okay, so now that I have my dark colors on my wings, um, I'm going to just grab some water from my cup and pulling the color that's already there from my wings outline, I'm just going to spread that. Now these are trying to give us, these aren't going to be super sharp. They're supposed to be fuzzy because this bird is flying and hummingbirds' wings fly so very fast that even if you take a picture, sometimes they're still fuzzy. That's kind of what we're going for here. So it's okay if the, your wings aren't super sharp and detailed because it's flying, it's moving, you know? This part scares me. It's just water. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a piece of paper. Hummingbird beats its go. wings 10 to 15 times per second. Whoa. Yeah. Heidi asked if we're using the six for this. Yes. I just use my round six um, to blend the water out. You can use your two, it just take a little bit longer. Amy says her spirit animal is a target mom. <laughs> <laughs> and leggings and Starbucks. Same. Danison got a gazelle as his spirit animal. That. I feel like that feels oh. right. Dan, yeah. I'm not surprised. That, sound, that feels right to me. Eileen says she's an otter. Ooh. Ooh. That's pretty cool. I think, isn't Hermione's Patronus an otter? I don't have yes. any way of knowing I'm sorry about that. him and his lack of It's Harry okay. It's, I know he hasn't read all of the books. <laughs> We've talked about it many times. <laughs> okay, and then what I'm going to do a little bit on the top top part of the wings right here is I'm going to put a little bit of that yellow green because those feathers will start to overlap with those um, the tops of the wings a little bit here. So I'm doing a little bit yellow and some green. 
Um, so the green I'm using is leaf green. If you don't have a green, you can absolutely mix green using um, yellow or blue. You have dandelion yellow and azure blue. That would work just great. Just mix those together um, to get a green. Play with the amount of yellow or blue that's in there to get a different shade of green. Okay, you might start to get frustrated with your bird at this point. Don't, don't yet. Animals always look really funky till the very end. This is still very much unfinished. It comes together. It's going to be okay. Come together. Mm. That's, yes. <laughs> We're going to get our feed cut. That's all I know. <laughs> really? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I'm basically a hummingbird. <laughs> He's not so great with Actually, fun fact about hummingbirds, they remember every single flower they've ever eaten from. How do people know I, I that? I was just about to ask. They How study their that? brains. But their brains are like... Or do you think... It means nothing so, to scientists. Do you, I, wish, I wish I knew the answer to that. Ooh, I like my wings. I'm going to leave those. Oh, that looks great. I'm going to bring it over so you guys can see. Look at how cool Suzanne's wings turned out. Look at that green. Those blooms on there. Very cool. Okay, now just like let your wings dry for a second. Stop messing with them. Calm down, everybody. Let's yep. give those a break. Yep. Now we're going to move on to another part of our painting. We're going to work on the leaves and the flowers while our hummingbird is kind of drying. So, leaves. I'm going to do the same thing with the wet on wet technique. Oh, Rita, her spirit animal is a turtle. Ooh. Teaches wisdom oh, she's and peace sticking to it with determination and serenity. Oh, those are good. Okay, so I'm gonna do my layer of water first for my leaf. And I love painting leaves because there's such a big space that we get to play with this wet on wet technique. So I'm gonna drop in some green. I'm gonna drop in some yellow. I'm gonna get some funky blooms but that's okay because I like them. And I feel like leaves are one of those things that you can get away with having really funky blooms, but you can still tell what it is, which is why I really like painting them. It's just fun. Oh, Terry said she has to leave, but she'll catch up on YouTube later. Thank you for joining us, Terry. Thank you. Have a wonderful and safe evening. Remember who you are and what you stand for. Mm -hmm. My mom used to say that to me every day. Okay, next leaf. You might still have some paint on your brush. That's okay. I'm painting it green anyway, so no big deal. Supercat2323 says, any thoughts on why the paints fuzz out when more concentrated? Oh, yes. So sometimes um, with these paints, because they're super con concentrated you'll get fuzzy edges. I have noticed that actually specifically with this January batch they tended to be a little bit more fuzzy than usual and I think that's just different formulas when they mix them together. So I've tested February's paints and I have not seen that same fuzz that I've seen with January and um, I think that sometimes just happens when you're mixing paints of, of the formulas because um, I have noticed that sometimes with Dr. PH Martin um, they'll get grainy and tend to separate so it's just different um, mixtures of paint but I let our paint mixers know and so what I do to combat the fuzziness is I do the the wet the use the water and then drop in the color and that tends to contain the fuzziness a little bit better to just where the water has touched first so if you're experiencing some fuzzy edges and you're getting frustrated, put water down first, just water, and then drop in the paint, and hopefully that will help contain that fuzzy edge. Did you do wet on wet on that leaf as well? Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna, I did wet, and I'm going to drop in some green, and you can just watch that move. And then if you want it to be kind of like a dark um, green, which... I do. I'm going to grab a little bit of the sea blue and also just drop that in there and let that kind of move around. Karen just took the quiz and she's also a deer. Cool. 
Do you know Brock okay. took the quiz? Do you know what he got? House cat. Yeah, he was so he mad. Did? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm like, Brock, take the spirit animal test. And he took it. He's like, I don't want to tell you what I got. He's like, this is crap. <laughs> and then he took it again. And he got a house cat again. Oh, and he was oh, so God. mad. My husband says that my spirit animal is a house cat <laughs> because I'm very much like, don't touch me. And like, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm aloof a lot where I'm just like, hmm. <laughs> where I'm like, but then he, <laughs> he like purposely doesn't sit right next to me on the couch because then I'll go sit next to him. It's a weird thing. That's so <laughs> That's really like he has to give me space first and then I'll come so to awesome. him. Every time we go to any like of Keenan's family gathering, any any family gathering, any gathering, oh, Keenan like will sit across the room from me, and I'm like, there's this? empty seats on both sides of me, because <laughs> he's, he's always just like so social and talks to everybody that he just he only sits for like five seconds and then he's back up. But I'm like, pretend you love me for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Taylor, who works for us, who is so amazing, she said she got a wolf for her spirit animal. And she hopes we can still be friends. And we can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't come to work you're tomorrow. Fired. No. I'm Sarah just takes this very seriously. <laughs> I'm real I the job interview is your spirit animal test. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now for this top leaf in the reference photo, you can see here that we have some veins going on. I'm not gonna do that part yet. That I'm gonna do after it dries for a second. So I'm just gonna do our normal wet on wet and then I'll come back to that to do the little veining on it. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor says she's quit. <laughs> That's all it took? That's all it took. Wow. Please don't, Taylor. I changed my mind. We can still be friends. When Brock jokes I'm fired, I'm like, I've been trying for months to get fired. That's, that's it. You're like, success. <laughs> okay. And one more leaf over here. And you guys can even do water droplets too in there for added textures and blooms. This is really the time you get to play. Do some green. And some blue. Oh, Kyle got a butterfly. Kyle is Taylor's husband. He's so nice. We play Dungeons and Dragons together, and it's a great time. He's really good at it. He is, he does accents and everything. Really? He, really, <laughs> it's truly amazing. Okay. So I did my leaves, now I'm gonna do my flowers. These ones I just kept um, in the magenta slash purple coloring. You guys can change up the flowers if you want, of course, because this is your painting. Um, you are free to do whatever you want, it's your life. But I'm just gonna have a little bit of mixture of purple ready. I think, uh, Dina, I, d I hope I'm saying your name right, Dina. Are these specific flowers or imagined? These are real flowers. I just don't know the name of them. Does anybody know the name of these flowers? Does anybody know? I always say bleeding hearts. No. But they're not that. Says it, I'm be like, I don't know what the answer is, but you were wrong, like, Keenan. <laughs> like bluebell or? They're not. What are they called? They're not bluebells. Mm. Bluebells ice cream crazy. Except they discontinued my favorite flavor, and now we're fighting. What's your favorite flavor? They made double chocolate chip cookie dough that was chocolate ice cream with cookie dough in it. 
and it was so good. Mm. And they stopped and making it? I don't know if they stopped making it completely, but they stopped selling it here. Mm. I haven't been able to find it in like years. And it was so good. What a shame. I know. I actually get really upset when they do that to me. <laughs> I'm like, I was your biggest fan. <laughs> I would have bought all the things. I thought we were friends. Judy says they look like fuchsia to me. Is there a flower called fuchsia? There is now. <laughs> I wish I knew more about the things that I paint. I'm sorry that I don't. Katie says trumpet vine. I trust Katie. Katie knows her stuff. Google some, Google some trumpet vine for us, Keenan. Aw. Yeah. Yeah? Is that yeah. what they are? Katie, I knew I could trust you. <laughs> you just know your stuff. Yep, trumpet flowers. That's what all of YouTube is saying. Trumpet flowers? Trumpets. Trumpets. Trumpet flower, trumpet vine, trumpet vine. Yes, trumpet vine. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. Katie's daughter just took the spirit animal test and she's a butterfly. That's so cute. Your daughter's happy about that. Danison said, Keenan, if hedgehogs stay mostly on the ground, do hummingbirds stay mostly in the air? <laughs> <laughs> Oddly, no. <laughs> Surprise fact, hummingbirds are <laughs> never twist. in the air. <laughs> Danison tried to trick me. And I'm kind of just playing with the different um, magenta and purple. I'm kind of just kind of going back and forth on them. So, <coughs> excuse me. So Bless sorry. You. Sorry. <laughs> Barbara says her spirit animal is a dog. I think I'm offended. <laughs> Dogs are great. Keenan, what's your favorite breed of dog? Bulldog. Yeah? Yeah. French or American? American. But remember, I'm not a dog person. You're not? No. I'm not an animal person, generally. Really? But I have a favorite dog. Really? Yeah. Neither one of us are huge animal people. Because they're smelly? Why? Yeah, bulldogs are the smelliest. Can, but you, can you tell me why you don't like animals? Because I, I feel like that's out of character. I didn't grow up with them. Really? Yeah. Oh. My, yeah, parents wouldn't let us have one. There were already nine mouths to feed, so if we added it. an animal, it'd be hard <laughs> enough. Too much. Yeah. I really like that that blue seeped in there. Oh, yeah, that's that. pretty. Gray says they got to go to bed. Good night. Good night. Thanks Good. for joining us. I bid you all adieu. No, are you trying to sing Sound of Music right now? Because it's the words. so wrong. You're so I wrong. Told you, he doesn't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> English, French, I don't know. Who knows? So long, farewell. Avita Zane. Okay, now you're just Good making night. words up. No, Sound Good of Music night. is one of my favorite movies of all time, okay? So let's not go there. <laughs> He will literally start to sing a song and I'll correct the lyrics and he'll start singing it again and still sing it wrong on purpose. <laughs> because I'm like, no, that's not the word. My version's just better. He thinks. Okay, and I'm just going to do some stems on these flowers. Like so. Heidi says, me too. I'm assuming she's talking about Sound of Music being one of her favorite movies. Such a good movie. I love it. And I'm just going to use for these ones that you're seeing the opening, I'm just going to use water and the color that's already there to get a lighter value within the inside of these flowers. And then I'm just going to go along the edge, the outer edge on the other one. I'm just going to let them be a little bit messy. <laughs> Mal says Kanan singing won't get us in trouble with copyright because they can't recognize the song. <laughs> True. That hurts. True. <laughs> Although I was getting corrected on YouTube as well, so <laughs> wrong tune, Kanan. 
I'm like, if you're trying to sing Sound of Music, get out of here. I was the second most offended I've ever seen Sarah. Listen, I really care about that movie. It's almost as bad as when I told her I didn't like Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> First of all, That's he is shocking. an amazing actor. <laughs> that is shocking. I did like he him is in Blood so Diamond. talented. He was terrible in Blood Diamond. Okay, that's one movie out of like <laughs> so many that he was so good at it. Okay. Um, okay, flowers are looking good. Now what I did once they're dry, mine are mostly dry so I could do this, is I just did some little, um, cause these trumpet flowers, they kind of have these uh, veins on them or like wrinkles from when they flare out. So I kind of like put a few in. Just try to kind of accentuate the shape of them a little bit. <laughs> Taylor said she just had this argument with Aisha too. She's pro Leonardo. I guess she had a fight with Aisha. Aisha and I, neither one are Leonardo fans. I don't know how Sorry. that's possible. Sorry. I have to be honest here. Do you appreciate I to, talent? I used to not like him. And then I watched, I don't remember what I watched, but I just, the more I watch his movies, I'm just like, man, he's just so good. I also wonder what I I think I just don't like his face. Of, yeah, that's I, I just like. I'm trying to think of the movies I've seen with him because I don't think it's been very many. I What's like Eating Blood Gilbert Diamond. Grape? Never saw it. You never no, saw, saw What's Eating Gilbert Grape? That's a great movie. It's a great movie. Uh. Inception. Just watched that recently. Shot. That's a great movie. Um, oh, Shutter Island. Shutter yeah. Island is aggressive. <laughs> it's a psychological thriller Freaks for me sure. Out. Yeah. Great in it though. He's great. Okay, they need. Oh, Melanie says nice close-ups, Keenan. Good job. Oh, The Great Gatsby. Yeah, that's what he was in. I saw that. Suzanne, I'm you need sorry. to watch. Maybe I just haven't. Maybe seen you it just need to is, watch some that, movies. Maybe you have to watch one of his movies at all. <laughs> I feel like I've seen him in other stuff. What have I seen him in? Um, beautiful mind. No, not no. Nope. Mind. What's the word? I'm, what's the one I'm thinking of? I don't Who's know. The mathematician. He's not in that. He's in none of them. No, that's Matt Damon. I'm Matt sorry. Damon. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I get confused I'm okay. a lot. Okay, we can't have this conversation. They both have that haircut <laughs> in movies because he has it in Titanic. Brown hair. He has I that get you. Like, bowl cut. <laughs> okay. I'm not really really good at that, like movie stuff. It's I don't not, believe I'm anything sorry. you say now. <laughs> okay, we're going to go back to... Um, our bird. And they, Valerie ever asked if I went back and did the top of my beak. I did not. I was giving that space to dry. So um, actually really quick, let's put in the veins on our leaves. So this is just a technique that I use because um, leaves usually have veins and they're usually a lighter color than the actual leaf. And so what I do when I'm putting, uh, if I wanted to show a little bit, a hint of what that is, is I pretty much just like imagine where those veins would be and then I paint around them. So you're basically like painting chunks of leaves, like so. Oh, thank you, Tiffany. She thinks he looks like Matt Damon too. Titanic. I never saw it. He's in that too. I think I saw part of it. I wasn't allowed to watch it. Goodwill Hunting. That's what you were thinking. That's what I was thinking. That's Matt Damon. Yeah. Oh, he's in Django Unchained. Never saw that. I actually didn't see that one. That's a good movie. I heard that that Beautiful was a little... I have seen that one. I probably will not watch that one again. It was yeah. a little much. Yeah, I won't watch it again. Man in the Iron Mask. He was in that. He was great in that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is a great, terrible movie. I feel like I have a lot of weird colors going on here. Catch me if you can. Yeah, that was oh, a good yeah. one. I did see that one. Aviator. I could. I don't remember that one. Oh. Romeo and Juliet. The Revenant. Uh -huh. Sue says Beautiful Mind, but I don't think he was in Beautiful Mind. Stand by. Or as good as it gets. Taylor, okay. Yes, I've never seen Titanic, but you've never seen every romantic comedy ever made. So. That's Except Titan. Well, I guess Titanic's not a comedy. Okay. So that's how we do the veins on the leaves. Now, focus. We're we're literally just talking about Leo and <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio movies. I miss so much. Like I'm so far behind you. I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay. 
we're going back to it. So I put my veins in my leaves. I kept them loose. They are going to bleed and move a little bit. That's okay. Um, a lot of this is just getting your ideas across. So don't stress if it's not perfect. And now we're going to go back and we're kind of just going to fill in the parts of our beak that we haven't really addressed or maybe that we need to revisit. So one of them is we need to put in the top of our beak. So Keenan, make sure you go to a close up okay, on this. As close as I can again. I missed your instruction on the vein, so I'm just... Oh yeah, you just do... Yep, you're doing it right. Just winging you're it. doing it just right. Winging it. <laughs> 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 Dorothea says she lives in Australia and due to time difference, um, it's her first live because usually we do them in, in the afternoons. Um, she says, hello guys, love you all. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> okay. Top of the beak, yes? Top of the beak. I'm just going to use water in the color that is already there to fill it in because I want it to be a lighter value. And that's all I do. That's it. That's the beak. And then I'm just going to like fill in to where it matches. It hits the green part on my bird because it wasn't quite there. Okay. Now, I left some white space around my eye because I wanted there to be a little bit of an eyelid, but this white space is a little bit too much, so I'm gonna go in and tighten up that space. So I'm gonna grab some green and some yellow and maybe mix it with a little bit of this kind of gray color to give it a shadow. Dang it, I thought that was dry. We have a lot of first timers here tonight. We do. I mean, we stopped doing lives like three or four months ago. Yeah, like, yeah October. Yeah. So. Really cool. It's fun to have it. We used to do this every Tuesday. I can't believe we did that. That was that so much. That is a busy month. <laughs> that was a busy life. Every Tuesday we couldn't leave because we we're like. Couldn't do anything. We're going to. Well, we definitely painted and we definitely partied. <laughs> with our paint party friends. Okay, so I'm just going in and just making the space, the white eyelid space around my black eye really thin. You might not need to do that, but mine I had to do that because I had a too, big, too big of a chunk. Brenda says, first time in loving this. <laughs> Thank goodness, because we are definitely chatting about so many different things right now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I would like to say that usually they were a little bit more focused, but I don't think yeah. they were. Rarely were they more focused. <laughs> but that's the fun of it. Yeah, this is what makes lives the best. Yeah. Okay. So um, I kind of went on, in on my eyelid a little bit. And now what I'm going to do for me is I'm going to kind of, my green that I added to my wings bled together. So now my wings look like they're one wing and that they're not separated. So I'm just going to define that front wing a little bit more by putting in a darker value on the edge. Because I want to make sure that these feel separated from each other. Oh, Laura says, not going to lie, a little part of my heart will forever be broken now that the weekly lives are gone. I know. People are saying that they miss them, and I totally understand. Deborah says, I've missed the lives, but glad you got your lives back. <laughs> Wanda, I think she came in late, but she said, are we back to weekly lives? So this is a special life to... Did I say live or life? You said live. Uh -huh. Live. To, to celebrate our two-year anniversary and that we launched our loyalty program. So we can do fun, we can do evening lives once in a while because we have a really good time painting with you guys. And maybe after my baby is born, he'll just be sleeping in one of those little slings. That'd be adorable. Oh, that'd be cute. Okay. So I'm doing the edge. And then on some of these 
um, edges here, like the lines that I initially put down and, and blended out, I'm gonna put some of those back in if I lost their shape a little bit too much. All right, I won't lie to you. Yeah. I did do another spirit quiz test thing. Oh, besides the... Uh... Uh -huh. I found another one. Okay. It took a while. Oh, what'd you get? So you haven't been paying attention Correct. to me. Correct. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting paid this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I live here, so... <laughs> I got a horse. Oh! Yeah. Does it tell you the qualities? It does. What no, does no. it say? Well, it's, it's going to sound pretty good. <laughs> Let's hear it. <laughs> okay, it says you got horse. Loyal, intelligent, and beautiful. The horse is one of the nature's finest creations. While horses can be flighty and neurotic. This isn't accurate at all. <laughs> they're also strong and hardworking. Okay, that part's capable true. Capable of developing great stamina and achieving a lot. The horse is a good symbol for anyone interested in self-improvement, guides, learning, Guided learning, teamwork, and never giving up on their goals. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Flighty and neurotic. <laughs> uh, Rita asks, what is the loyalty program? Well, Rita, we now have a loyalty program that is a point system that is based off of purchases that you have made with us. You also get points when it's your birthday. You get points when you refer a friend. You get points when you follow us on social media. You get all these different points. If you log into your account, you can keep track of them and you can use them towards future purchases. Because we like you guys. And uh, I think that's the gist. That's the yeah. good gist of it. Okay. Now we're going to go to our very last step, which is we're going to put in our like just finishing oh. details. So I'm going to switch to my one or my two, sorry. And I'm going to grab like a light gray because I'm going to do the feather textures on my belly. But I want to make sure since this belly is so light that the um, texture, the feather textures that I put in aren't too dark. So um, it's going to be kind of like a grayish color. And I just have that chill in here on my palette from all my different mixing. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that. And I'm just going to do a few... Um, do, do, do. Kenan's, are we on a close-up? Yes. Okay. Body, right? Yep. So I'm going to go to the belly. And remember, we follow the shape of our belly when we do our do do do's. So, oh. Did I say do do do's or did I go? You did say do do do's. Okay, when I did the warm-up? Okay, great. Do do do. Do do and I did a Yeah, you can do both. Whatever feels right to you. I'm going to do Where are you pulling color? So I'm getting some of this like grayish right okay. here. So it's just a little bit. Use your paper towel. Even after you pick up color, if you notice that you're still having so much water on your brush, a good trick is after you pick up color on your brush, dab it on your paper towel a couple of times and that will absorb the excess water. Donna says, just a suggestion, why don't you have Brock and Keenan do a few lives? <laughs> <laughs> they would do great at them, actually. We would have a great time. Brock has taught two lives before yeah. because I was sick. And you were out of town for one. I was out of town oh, for yes. one. And you had strep or something. And I had strep throat for the other. And Brock did a great job. Yeah. And you Brock painted on. Little, I painted on the jig. Geographic, geo, geometrical, geometric, yes, landscape. I on the rainbow wish. Yeah, rainbow wish. Do you know what? Who said that suggestion? Donna. Donna, great suggestion. Kina, why don't you pull your weight around here a little bit more? Why don't you get in front I of see. the camera? I see what happened. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Okay. <laughs> okay, so there are my little feather textures a little bit on the belly and then now I'm going to do a little bit of textures on the head and the throat and the tail. So let's do the tail. I'm going to get kind of a dark blue and these these ones are going to be um, kind of more longer lines because these are longer feathers. So they're going to be like here's a couple here, here's a couple here. It's just a little bit. It's just a little bit of 
long lines to show that there are layers of long feathers. It's actually funny, we're trying to catch up with tutorials because I'm having a baby soon and we're struggling to do that because we're just busy and there's a lot going on and Brock every day is just like, please film these tutorials or else I'm gonna have to teach all of February and I don't want to. <laughs> So we'll see. I that mean, would if, be super if this baby funny. comes in the next couple of days, then he for sure is going to have to teach a couple <laughs> tutorials. That'll be okay. You know? It will be okay. Yeah. Brock can wing it. <laughs> I already used that joke. I didn't, I didn't mean to. <laughs> it was an accident. That was aggressive, Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need a ride home later. <laughs> he does. I'm going to need a ride home later. <laughs> okay. Now, when we get to the throat, we're going to use a dark purple to do a couple of textures. But still make sure it's in the pink family or just whatever colors you have going on. Like if your throat is more purple, then obviously yours can be purple. And we're going to do some like U-shaped textures a little bit. So it's going to be like U, 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 like that. Because that's the shape of these feathers that are going on. Now, again, it's just a hint here and there. You don't have to fill the entire space with textures. And sometimes if I do it like too perfectly and too much, I'll actually just take a damp brush and blend some of them out. Because sometimes if you do textures evenly across a uh, area, it will actually flatten the, uh, the form a little bit. So if it's starting to look just a little bit too, uh, like too patterny, that's when I'll kind of mess it up on purpose. Okay, and then on the very top of the head, it's going to be a couple of the uh, U feathers again, just on the top part. Because these are also like short feathers that are layered a little bit. Again, just hints, let it be a little bit messy. Wanda agreed with you and me needing to pull my weight. <laughs> Thank you, Wanda. She said, yeah, Keenan, LOL. <laughs> I feel like mine are too dark. Vanessa said her seven-year-old son, Bobby, says hello and he likes your little hummingbird. Oh. Okay, do you want me to help you with that? If they're too dark? Yeah. Okay. Keenan, stay on the close-up and I'm going to show you guys what to do. So Suzanne just put in her feathers on the top of her head, but the value was too dark. And this is where, this is a great example of, even though this isn't black, it's reading black because of how light the wash is behind it. Mm -hmm. um, so when that happens, it can distract from what you're trying to paint. And so what I tend to do, is it okay if I paint on this? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So what I like to do is I'm going to actually wet these, just the whole thing I'm gonna wet. And then I'm going to take a piece of paper towel and blot. So the water is automatically going to lighten them. And then blotting will pick up any excess. Like that. Okay. Ugh, so it's like you're starting over again. And then you just want to wait for it to dry. And I'm going to put a little bit of yellow back in here since we mix it with blue. So I would just wait for that to dry for a second. And then after that is dry, you can go back in and just do it with a slightly lighter value. And I probably am going, I would stick more just to the very top of the head. Okay. I don't do too many under the eye. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Okay. And then this is kind of just where we're looking and we're just like, okay, um, do I need to do a little more detail lines here or there? I'm feeling actually pretty good. I'm going to do a little extra blue under my tail here. And then what I'm going to do, because I feel like my yellow got too mixed up on the back of my bird, I'm going to grab some just clean yellow and drop some in just for that vibrant touch of yellow. 
Again, you don't have to do this. Maybe you like the colors just how, you, how they are. Maybe you just don't like yellow, that's okay. But I always like to drop in some, just some drops of color here and there just for that, to get this bright colored effect. Nancy loved your, your bird, Suzanne. She also said that she's willing to come work at Let's Make Art as the snack getter. <laughs> you are hired. <laughs> <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> we are interested. <laughs> okay. I think. I feel like if I mess with it, I'm going to mess it up. <laughs> I think like, the colors that you got right here are so pretty. I love that, like, turquoise blue. I think it's fun how it bled into the that uh, pink and purple. It, it's like a pastel a little. I like that. Okay. Okay, so we're going to hold it up then. Because we're done. We did it. Keenan, are you ready to do our yes. our hold up? Gosh, we haven't done this in a while. This is fun. Your, your portrait pose. It could possibly sound weird. Who knows? Okay. It could also be very blown out because I don't think there's a way to adjust this. <laughs> is it? Yeah, <laughs> really rough. Can they, s you can't adjust the. I mean, I'm also blind. Hey, where are your glasses? I refuse. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's not a view they want to see. Was that you? Yes. Did you flip the camera? <laughs> yes. Got it. Whatever I did worked. Okay. Sarah, we're going to start with you. Okay, here. Tell, me, tell me when it's on me. And it's on you. Beautiful. Look at the Thank hummingbird. You. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Lovely hummingbird. And see that. Kind of cut off the top of the head <laughs> on the other side. Oh, lovely, lovely. I really like this. Oh. Okay. Um, so that is our painting, you guys. You did it. Good. Oh my gosh, Suzanne, I love that leaf. I love leaf. that too. That's what I just said. I was like, I love this Look part. at this. <laughs> Wait, which camera are you on? Overhead? Overhead. Look at this leaf right here. Look how gorgeous that is. I love that so much. That turned out beautiful. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. It was so fun to talk and chat and laugh and paint with you guys. Um, the best part is holding them up and seeing them. And if you're part of our Facebook community, which I would think so, cause we're watching on this, <laughs> but, um, post your work. I know it's really scary. I know that we have this thing in our head where, um, we kind of tie our value to how well our paintings turn out, but don't do that because, um, it's not about being the best painter. It's not about being the most talented. It's not about comparing yourself. It's about having fun and, um, just the joy you feel when you create something and when you put yourself out there, other people are willing to put themselves out there and we can learn from each other. We can look at Suzanne's painting and be like, wow, that leaf was so gorgeous. How did you do that? And we can apply whatever we learn to our own paintings. Um, it's all about community over competition, right? That's what we're about here at Let's Make Art. So you guys are awesome. Um, thanks again for joining us tonight. If you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. Um, I don't know when we would do, when we're going to do another evening live. I can't tell you that because I'm we having a baby. Have, we don't have that information. <laughs> we don't have that information. We'd love to share it with and you. And depending on how me having a baby goes, yeah. I don't want to plan another one. But it's okay. Could be Brock. <laughs> it could be Brock. Who knows? Oh, that, that would actually be fun. That would be. Okay, so... Um, Thank you guys. A lot of people are saying happy anniversary to us. So I really appreciate you guys. I can't believe we're on, we've been here for two years. Yeah. That's crazy. So thanks for being a part of this with us. You guys are awesome. And um, that's it. That's all I'm going to say. Suzanne, thanks for being here. No problem. Keenan, as always. Thank you. Bye.